and welcome to Art Today. I'm Rachel Meeks, and I'm here today to share one of my favorite lessons that you can do with any age kid, and you only need a couple of things today. So to let you know what you need today, the first thing you're going to want are oil pastels. If you can't find oil pastels, you can use chalk pastels, but oil pastels are probably my favorite. It doesn't matter what brand, but oil pastels, they are a little messier. So if you're working with little kids, you might need something to protect your table space and even some hand wipes or baby wipes for hands. If you have anybody that is texture sensitive, you might also want some paper towels to wrap around your oil pastels if needed. The other thing that you're going to need is just a little bag. I had a student that was wonderful and gave me some honey a few weeks ago and I kept the bag just for this project. So don't throw away your paper bags. They are hard to come by and they're great for all sorts of crafts. So to give you a backdrop to this lesson before we really get into it, one of the world's most famous artists, Pablo Picasso, once said, every child is an artist. The problem is staying one when you grow up. And that kind of got the balls rolling in my head. And I'm like, what was the first artist? Like all humans are artists, but someone gets in their head, whether it's themselves, a peer, a mean teacher at some point that tells them they're not good at art. And then from that point on, they're no longer an artist. And that really hurts my heart because I'm like, humans are artists. And then I thought about the first art that we know of, and it always changes with history and science and archeology, span things are always changing as new things are discovered. But we do know that there is a cave in France and there is a cave in Spain. They're pretty close together on opposite sides of a mountain range where some of the first art has been found inside caves. Pretty fun stories. One of the stories is a poor dog falls down a hole, the boys go in after him and they find the cave art. The other is there's this archeologist who, or he's a part-time archeologist, it's his hobby. And he takes his little like three, four year old daughter with him and he's stooped down and you know, his little daughter's looking all around and she's like, hey daddy, why are there buffalo on the ceiling? And you know, there's no buffalo in Spain. And he looks up and there are all these cave paintings and just wonderful discovery stories and origin stories. But you go back even further to the people that made these paintings that we don't know a whole lot about. They did not care about what it looked like. They were trying to share their inner personality, their lives, their families. They were trying to leave a part of them behind. And that is something as humankind we can all get behind. We want to leave something of our self behind. And if you ever watch the movie The Croods or you watch The Flintstones, any kind of movie like that, um, Casino Man I think was another one you'll see cave art being used. The Croods was one of the wonderful ones because it had the handprints and that's one of the most like breathtaking cave arts that you can see is the handprint because some of the handprints belong to little kids and they, with their carbon dating and all the science, they can tell you like how old the kid was or how old the human was by a hand shape and all that good stuff. Um, now, when they originally did the cave art, they would use some kind of hollow bone or reed and suck up their earth made paints and then put their hand on and like actually blow it like a blow pin and we're going to do something a little different. We can't really use a blow pin with these. Um, if you have blow pins, you could probably do this project a little differently. But let's get into it. So just to start to show you guys, this is an example I did with the handprint, some little people, and they are stick figures. It is okay if all you can draw is a stick figure. This is the project for you. I tried to draw a little um, woolly mammoth any animals, if you're into hunting, go hunting. If you're into dinosaurs, draw dinosaurs. If you're more into social media, why not a dinosaur with social media? See what you can discover. So to do that, but also I did have some students that gave me theirs a few years ago. And every kid's an artist. I love this. Maybe the student didn't love it and that's why they gave it to me instead of taking it home. 
but I love it. I've cher cherished it. They didn't put their name on it. So if you recognize it, I love it. I still have it. So the first thing we need to do, pick out which bag you want to use. Now you can use scissors if you're very like particular about edges, but I'm going to warn you towards the end of this, I'm going to have you actually like crinkle your work and rip the edges. So it is okay. I normally find the seam and I just rip down. If it rips a little bit, that's okay. And then I'm going to try to open it up. I'm probably going to end up ripping the bottom off. Um, kids tend to get a little frustrated with this one, especially if they're younger or they're more prone to wanting things to be perfect. So you might need to help your kids with this if they're helping you with it. So, like I said, does not need to be perfect. Get the bottom off of there. And you can do some really big ones. You could do a whole wall if you had like the brown butcher paper or um, I think they do gift, gift wrap now that's kind of like this. You can do smaller ones, bigger ones, it's up to you. And I'm gonna take off the handles here. I'm gonna put those aside, keep everything. I know it's a problem, but I can always find something to do with the leftovers. So now that I have my bag that's open, I'm gonna try to smooth it down. I'm gonna decide what side I want to work on. I probably don't want to work on this particular side because it has the glue from the handles and it's got some texture to it. And I don't have any stickers or stamps from the company. So I'm going to use the outside of the bag. It doesn't matter, just whichever one's the prettier side is what you want to use. So try to smooth it out as much as you can. Now you're going to come to your oil pastels. I'm gonna pick out the ones that are more earthy colors, maybe colors that represent what could have been used way back when the cave paintings were actually being painted. So I'm gonna go with a red, definitely if I can find a yellow ochre. So yellow ochre and like red iron colors are pretty common. I will tell you a lot of the kids always think if they see red in the cave paintings, they always think it's blood. I promise you it's not blood. It was actually probably some type of iron rich paint that might've been a different color. And then because it's been so long and oxygen and everything has kind of gotten in there and oxidized the iron, it's become red. So kind of think about how rust is together. Promise you there's no blood being used. So I'm gonna continue picking out like my browns. I'm probably gonna pick a white and a black. I wanna stay away from the neon colors. That's my personal preference. If you want neon colors, go for it. It's your art, use whatever colors you want. This is just my preference. So we are going to go ahead and take a break now. So once we come back, we will get started. I'll show you how to draw a couple different animals and do the handprint. Be ready to get messy, get your baby wipes together, and we will see you in just a bit. I'm Ashley Rich, District Attorney. Today I want to talk to you about a program that we at the District Attorney's Office has with the Mobile County Public School Systems to help with the bullying issues that are going on in today's world because of social media and because our young people think it's okay to bully others. It's not okay to bully others. Bullying is repeated verbal and physical abuse, ongoing verbal and physical abuse. We at the Mobile County District Attorney's Office want to help the community, we want to help the public school system, and we want to stop bullying within our community. It's really, really important that we do so. And parents need to be responsible if their child is either being bullied or if their child is a bully. Parents need to be involved to stop the bullying or to help the child if they are being bullied. And we at the Mobile County District Attorney's Office and the Mobile County Public School System are also here to help. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well-balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, 
fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. Hi, and welcome back to Art Today. Again, I'm Rachel Neese, and today we are working on some really fun cave art that we can have for ourselves on any scale. So where we left off, I was picking out a whole bunch of different earth tones. But remember, I said if you wanted to use any color you want, it's up to you. I'm not gonna come to your house and tell you what colors you have to use. Um, yellow is one of my favorite colors, so I did throw yellow in there. Um, if pink's your favorite color or purple or blue or green, throw those in there as well. So the first thing we do, we try to smooth out our bag as much as possible. It's okay if it's not perfect. If you need to put books or something heavy on the edge, especially if you're working with a larger piece, do that. Um, it will help it from sliding around. And now we decide what we're going to draw. So one of the most famous parts of the caves are the handprints. So I'm gonna show you how to do the handprints. I'm just gonna pick a brown here. And hopefully most people have traced their hand before. If you've got little kids doing this, you might need to help them. If they've got long sleeves, go ahead and have them pull them up. Also have some hand wipes or baby wipes available because they're going to get a little messy and you don't want them rubbing their clothes or your walls with oil pastels. This might be a good outside on the porch um, type of project if they're real little or get messy. So you're gonna have, and you might need to help your kid trace their hand. I know when I did this with younger grades, I did have to help several of them trace their hand because it was a little hard with their dexterity still but have them open their hand, open your fingers as wide as you can. Put your hand down and go ahead, take your color and you want to trace your hand. And I'm pushing decently hard. We're going to go back over our lines a couple of times and push real hard. We want a lot of pigment, a lot of color, a lot of the oil pastel on there. So I've got it drawn and I'm gonna use a slightly different color so you can see what I'm talking about. We'll go, it's a, might be the same color. I'm not sure, it looked different. Okay, it's the same color. I'm going to go along my lines and I'm gonna kind of go back and forth and I'm pushing real hard. I want a lot of pigment on my lines. The more pigment, the better my little handprints are going to turn out to be because it's gonna give me more pigment to move around my bag. So just push real hard back and forth if you need to. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. If you make yourself a pointy finger, that's okay. We're going to be smoothing it out. If you're pushing these hard enough, they might break. I just felt this one snap. Oil pastels do that. It's okay to break them if they don't have the paper on them anymore. You can get a paper towel or another like little piece from your bag, like some trash and wrap it around your piece. Kind of just wrap it around and it will help your fingers from getting messy. I don't mind being messy, but some people, they mind the messiness. Other people don't quite like the feel of the oil pastels. Oop. And you can see I messed up just a little bit there. That's okay. We are okay to mess up. This is a mess up happening art. It is okay. So once I have my hand pretty well outlined, pretty thick, I'm gonna take my thumb because it's one of the stronger fingers on my hand. And you can turn your paper around if you need to, if it's not being held down by something. And I'm going to put my thumb on the line and I'm just going to push. And you can see the harder I push the direction that I'm pushing, my oil pastel is going that direction. So this is pretty cool. I'm liking how it's turning out, but I think I can make even more. I might go in with another color in a little bit. I'll think about it and make my hand print go out even more. I feel like the inside of the hands they look a little too clean. It doesn't quite look like a dirty old cave that's been sitting there 
for thousands of years. I like to go in and make stuff on the inside of my hand. I'll show you that in a minute, but I did want to show you one of the most famous um, animals from around the time frame would probably be a woolly mammoth. And there's a movie with a woolly mammoth named Manny. And one of my favorite dogs we had growing up was named Manny or Manfred. So I like the woolly mammoths. I'm going to decide, I think for the woolly mammoth, I'm going to go with a yellow color and a white color. You can't really mess this up. If you can draw a circle, you're going to draw the circle for the head. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. I'm going to kind of scribble in. I don't have to fill in the whole thing. So that's my head. And then from the top of my head, I have a trunk, right? So I just draw a line down. And then I'm going to follow that line on the other side and then connect them. So it's kind of like a curved rectangle. I'm going to color that in some. I need a little bit more of my oil pastel. So seeing as this one hasn't broken, I can take some of my wrapper there and just peel it a little bit, almost like an egg. Put that aside. Now for the body. The body is just like a bigger, longer circle or oval. So I'm going to start at my head and I'm just going to make a circle. But here's the thing, guys. Woolly mammoths always had like a bit of a hump on them. So I am going to put a triangle. Oop, that one broke. I'm going to use the rest of this. I'm going to put a triangle on the back. It's going to make sense. I promise it's not going to be like a shark elephant when we are done. I'm going to make four legs. If you just want two legs, that's okay. This is a cave painting. Probably had a tail like an elephant. I'm going to make a little tail. So then I'm going to color in more because again, this is messy. We're going to blend everything with our fingers in a minute. I'm going to add some highlights into this. So I'm going to use some white. You can use whatever color you want. And I'm just going to color again inside my areas that I made. It, it really is, it's kind of scribble scrabble, but it's going to come together when we blend it together. Okay, so now it's time to blend. I'm going to use my pointer finger this time because it's a little softer of a blend. And you're just going to kind of rub it inside your shapes. And your woolly mammoth is going to take shape. If you want to, if you've got weaker fingers, little kids, it might be easier for them to use their thumb. But just get all those colors mixed in, blended. Now, my woolly mammoth looks a little weird. It needs its tusks. So I'm going to go in one tusk because we're looking at the animal from the profile or the side. So one tusk is going to be behind and the other one is going to be in front. So I'm just going to draw one in back and one in front. And we're going to come down. These do not need to be perfect guys. These remember we are cave drawing. They were just doing their best. That's all we're going to do is our best. Now we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we will finish our cave art. Be prepared. You're going to have to crumple your art some, but it will be okay. So we'll see you in just a little bit and we'll be back. It's a fact. Bullying happens. Bullying can lead to serious physical and emotional pain. But there are some things you can do to prevent or stop it. Stand up for the person who's being bullied. Let the bully know that it's not cool to pick on others. Take action by reporting the bully to a teacher or principal. In the end, when you help someone who's being bullied, you are also helping yourself. Hi, and welcome back to Art Today. We are finishing up our cave paintings and we're almost done. So let's go ahead where we left off with our woolly mammoth. We need a few more details. I'm going back in with the black. You can go back in with a, a darker color. I'm just going to give that guy a eyeball. And then the ear is almost like a backwards three or a backwards E. 
And then I'm just going to kind of sharpen up his little um, tusks there. I might make some lines to define some of his shapes. And I think the only reason this is a boy one is because our dog was a boy. They were also very hairy. So I can go in and add hair if I want. And if I want to give him a smile, I can. I don't know, that looks a little weird. To find his head a little bit. So there is my woolly mammoth. Now here's the thing, if you want people, you can look at different images. This cave art is all around the world. So it depends on how old the cave art is, where in the world you're finding the cave art. The people are going to be a little done a little differently. It also probably depends on the artist that did them. There can be caves with different styles of different people. So your cave art can look however you want it. I'm going to make my cave art green. That's the, the color I picked. So I'm going to make a couple little cave people here, maybe like a cave big sister and a cave little brother. We'll go with that. I've got a little brother. I'm sure they had annoying little brothers then too. So my brother's 30. He's still annoying. Love him to death. Love you, Michael. Okay. I'm just picking up some colors and I'm putting a couple different colors in my cave art because again we're going to use our fingers i've got people there let's go with one slightly lighter color and let's see i like woolly mammoths i don't want my little cave people shooting my woolly mammoth so we're probably let's give them a camera so we're just going to give this one a camera which is a box with a circle in it and then a little square at the top with a flash. You can get real creative. You can have your animals and your shapes doing whatever you want them to. So going to take my finger again and kind of play with my people. You can leave them as stick figures if you want to give them clothes or objects. You can do whatever you want. I'm probably, we said we'd make these a brother and sister so we're gonna give this one a little cave dress which is like a flattened triangle and this guy can get some shorts so you're just following the legs and putting some shorts on them so I've got my cave people with the camera they're taking pictures of the woolly mammoth and we're going to come back to the hand because if you remember I said I didn't like how the hand was looking. I felt like it was empty. I'm just going to come in my hand. I like to make swirls in mine. I think they look cool. I'm going to take a couple different colors, make spirals, and bring them around. Talking about the camera though that I had my cave people doing as I'm kind of smoothing out this coil and fixing up my hand here a little bit. There was an interesting discovery not too long ago in one of the older caves. I believe it was the one that is located in modern day France. But they actually have these new flashlights that kind of mimic like firelight. And they realized some of the art that they couldn't figure out why it was so kind of like, ugh, they didn't like it too much. It looked kind of messy that if they took the torch and kind of went back and forth with like the firelight. It was almost like a moving picture of the, I believe it's a lioness is the most famous one for that. So that's real cool. They were thinking about moving pictures and movies and entertainment even back then. So yet another, all art, all humans are artists. We also like entertainment and that's what our artists do, whether it's dance or music or visual arts. So always really cool. Okay, so now that I have my picture the way I like it, I can always go back in and draw more lines if I wanna kind of make it look like a cave wall. I can do that with gray or black. 
Um, if you can't find a paper bag, you can take regular paper and um, stain it with some old tea or coffee and let it dry and use that as well. That's a backup. All right, now that I've made my beautiful art, I've got to do something that's gonna break some of y'all's heart. We are going to put it together and we're just gonna crumple it. Squeeze it, make it into a ball. Don't open it yet. A lot of you guys are gonna wanna open it as soon as you squish it. But just kind of squish it, try to get as many like just fun wrinkles and crinkles in there that you can. Now we're gonna carefully open it. If you are younger and you need an adult to help you open it, let them help you because the last thing you want to do is rip your wonderful art you've just spent all this time on in half. So just carefully open it back up. And once it's open, the colors probably got all mixed together, which is what we want. It's awesome. This is going to be the real messy part. I'm going to put my hands flat down and I'm going to smooth this thing out as much as I can. If I want more crinkles, I can always crumple it up again and do this process over and over again. But being smeared and kind of funky looking is what we are wanting. So my hands really aren't that dirty, but if I really had time to get into this, they'd probably be real dirty. Now the last thing I wanna do, you can see I have some ripped edges up here, which are fine, but then I have some man-made edges down here and on the side. So I'm gonna put my hand on the inside of my paper and I'm gonna make tiny little tears so that I'm not tearing my piece in two. And I'm moving my hand with my tearing so that I'm tearing away from my art. And you'll notice I'm pulling the paper away if I can. And I'm just gonna give it some interesting texture there on the bottom. Texture is a huge art word. It's one of my favorite things to put into my art because texture is the way things feel. And sometimes you can see how something feels and then other times you can feel how things feel. Now, if you ever get the chance to go see one of these caves, you actually can't feel them anymore because they are closed to the public. They do have replicas built that you can, that you can visit that are built right next door. So make sure you have your hand wipes, wipe your hands, wipe your hands down when you are done with your project and admire your beautiful cave art, put it up in your own cave, maybe make a blanket for it. And thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see you again. We've got so many other projects for you, but have a great day and get out there, make some art, get messy. You're not doing it right if you're not getting messy.